This episode was requested by my patron, Erratic Transparency. Ghosting does more harm to you than the person you've ghosted. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about ghosting. Ghosting is when you've been role-playing with someone for a while, and then they suddenly stop replying to your role-plays, but they've been active elsewhere in the role-play community. We have all been ghosted a time or two during our time in the role-play hobby, and if you haven't been ghosted yet, just keep role-playing. Don't worry, it'll happen to you at some point, too. So, with that being said, let's get into it. Let's break it down. Ghosting is when you've been role-playing with someone for a while and they suddenly stop replying to your role-plays, but they're otherwise active in other areas of the role-play community. Ghosting is not when someone disappears from the internet entirely. Ghosting is not when you've been plotting with someone for a few days and they stop responding before you ever even had a chance to start the role-play. Ghosting is not when you've been role-playing with someone all day long and they log off and go to bed without telling you. And ghosting is not when you've written a scene with somebody and they don't hit you up for a second scene. The point is, you need to go on a few dates with someone before them leaving you on red is ghosting. When a potential roleplay partnership is new and you've not roleplayed together enough to establish that reciprocal social contract, the other person's under no obligation to tell you that they want to stop roleplaying or why. Consider, they might not even know they want to stop role-playing. They might believe they want to keep role-playing with you and they stop responding for some other reason or another. Sometimes the reason is within the ghoster's control, sometimes it's not. Desire is not the only ingredient required for action. Someone might want to role-play with you, but there's only 24 hours in a day and those 24 hours might be taken up with other things. So. If what you're complaining about or what you're upset about with ghosting is one of the situations that I described earlier when I was talking about what ghosting is not, I think you need to take a deep breath and have a little more grace with people. They haven't done anything wrong to you by dropping you at those early stages. So again, ghosting is when you've been role-playing with someone for a while and they suddenly stop replying to your role-plays while they are otherwise active in the role-play community. If you poll a large enough sample of role players and ask them what the biggest problem in the role play community is, a huge percentage of them will say ghosting. And I know this because I've seen a couple people do these types of surveys and they pretty much all shake out this way. So why does everyone hate ghosting so much? Well, finding a role play partner that you like is hard. So when you find one that you think you like or establish that you like them and then it doesn't work out, it hurts. In my opinion, roleplay is one of the most intimate platonic hobbies that you can engage in, and that's why I compare it to dating so much on this channel. And remember, the brain registers social pain the same way it registers physical pain. It hurts when you've been on a few dates with someone and it ultimately doesn't work out. So just like that, in roleplay, when things peter out and the person ghosts you, it hurts. Also. Roleplay is a hobby that tends to attract people that are more on the fringes of society, and they might not have that emotional, social safety net needed to recover from the rejection, which means you're more likely to encounter people with high rejection sensitivity. Obviously, if it's this rampant, then everyone's basically ghosting and getting ghosted. These are not two separate camps of people, the ghosters and the ghosted. They're the same people. So if the people that are complaining about ghosting have a large overlap with the people that are ghosting, then that means everyone's doing it and really hating it at the same time. So why does that happen? Because in addition to getting ghosted, you know what's also painful? telling someone that you're just not that into them. It's way easier to ghost than deal with the potential conflict of having that conversation. 
I'm not personally someone that really hates ghosting, but I definitely am someone that's been hurt by ghosting and then has turned around and ghosted other people. And I can tell you that this is precisely the reason. I used to never ghost, right? Just never did it. But I started ghosting sometimes because I had a couple of experiences where I told the other person I didn't want to roleplay with them anymore and they either just flipped out on me super angry and betrayed or they did what's even worse and tried to beg me back, which is super uncomfortable and a type of conversation that is very hard for me to have. These people offer to change their style to get me to stick around. And, and no one wants that. No one wants someone to change for them. I want to find somebody that's already matched with me, not mold somebody in this fake image of my perfect roleplay partner. So being a roleplay help person, I have definitely been tasked with creating videos that help people stop this ghosting epidemic in the roleplay community. And I'm sorry to tell you that that video will never happen. I can't stop people from ghosting. No one can. You can only control yourself, not others. So I'm just talking to you right now, the one person watching this video at the moment. If you hate ghosting and you think it's awful and you think we should all stop doing it, the only thing that you can do is for you to stop ghosting. If someone proposes an idea to you that you don't like, tell them no thank you. If a role play is starting to get boring, tell the other person you're just not that into it anymore and you want to end it. If a role play is done and you don't want to do another scene, be upfront and tell them that. Consider this, ghosting does more harm to you than the person you've ghosted. Ghosting weakens your communication skills and your ability to handle conflict. Conflict doesn't have to be a negative thing. It's a normal part of human communication that happens in all relationships, roleplay relationships included. Refusing to be stifled by our fear of conflict is how we end ghosting. Communication, even when it's hard, is going to make you a better roleplayer. Also, you can do a little bit of what I do and realize that ghosting is part of the landscape, it's going to happen, you can't control other people, and if you're ghosted, it probably has less to do with you and more to do with what that person has going on in their life because roleplay is not the one and only thing that we're doing with our 24 hours in a day. Ghosting isn't good for you, and I don't mean that it's mean to the other person, I mean that you're weakening that conflict muscle that needs to stay flexed. It's hard, because conflict is hard, but the more that you avoid conflict, the worse you're going to be at it. And don't forget, if someone won't take no for an answer, there is always the block button. Alright, so that's the ghosting video. It's not really what anybody asked for, but it's my thoughts on ghosting, what ghosting is. I hope that helped you guys to understand it a little bit better and understand my stance on ghosting a little bit better. So let me know down below if you ghost, if you've been ghosted, what those experiences have been like for you. I'm really curious and I would love to hear your stories as well. So let me know all of that down below and don't forget as always to make it a great day.